All right, guys, we are back with another book. Um, I have never read this one, but I am kind of excited. It is the first book in the How to Train Your Dragon series, and it's How to Train Your Dragon, The Historic Misadventures of Hiccup the Viking, as told by Crescendia Cowl. I'm hoping it's a good one. So let's get started, and we'll find out together. There's a note from the author. There were da dragons when I was a boy. There were great grim sky dragons that nested off the cliff tops like gigantic scary birds, little brown scuttly dragons that haunted down the mice and rats in well-organized packs. Preposterously, huge sea dragons that were 20 times as big as the big blue whale who killed for fun of it. You will have to take my word for it, for the dragons are disappearing so fast they may soon become extinct. Nobody knows what is happening. They are crawling back into the sea from whence they came, leaving not a bone, not a fang in the earth for the men of the future to remember them by. So in order for that these amazing creatures should not be forgotten, I will tell this true story from my childhood. I was not the sort of boy who could train a dragon with a mere lifting of an eyebrow. I was not a natural as the heroism business. Heroism business. I had to work at it. This is a story of becoming a hero the hard way. That's our, our author, Hiccup. This is his story. So, chapter one. First, catch your dragon. Long ago, on the wild and windy Isle of Burke, a smallish Viking with a longish name stood up to his ankles in snow. Hiccup, horrendous haddock the third, the hope and heir to the tribe of the hairy hooligans, had been fi feeling slightly sick ever since he woke up that morning. Ten boys, including Hiccup, were hoping to become full members of the tribe by passing the Dragon Initiation Program. They were standing on a bleak little beach at the bleakest spot on the whole bleak island. A heavy snow was falling. Pay attention, screamed Goober the Belch, the soldier in charge of the training initiation, or of the teaching initiation. This will be your first military operation, and Hiccup, you will be commanding the team. So, just so you know, that's Goober the Belch. He is the, as it says down here, idiot in charge of initiation. Oh no, not Hiccup, groaned Dog's Breath, the Dub Brain, and most of the other boys. You can't put Hiccup in charge, sir. He's useless. Hiccup Horrendous Haddock the Third. The hope and heir of the tribe of the hairy hooligans wiped his nose miserably on his sleeve, and he sank a little deeper into the snow. Anybody would be better than Hiccup, sneered Snotface Snotlout. Even fish legs would be better than Hiccup. Fish legs had squint, had a squint that made him as blind as a jellyfish and allergies to reptiles. Silence, roared Goober the Belch. The next boy to speak has limpets for lunch for the next three weeks. There was absolute silence immediately. Limpets are a bit like worms and a bit like snot and a lot less tasty than either. That doesn't sound good. Hiccup will be in charge, and that is an order, screamed Goober, who didn't do noises quieter than screaming. He was a seven-foot giant in mad glint in one of his working eyes and a beard like exploding fireworks. Despite the freezing cold, he was wearing hairy shorts and a tiny weeny deer deer skin, a teeny weeny deer skin, vest that showed off his lobster red skin and bulging muscles. He was holding a flaming torch in one gigantic fist and in one gigantic fist. Hiccup will be leading you, although he is immediately completely useless because Hiccup is the son of the chief and that's the way things go with us Vikings. Where do you think you are? The Republic of Rome? Anyways, that is the least of your problems today. You are here to prove yourself as a Viking hero, and in, it is in the tradition, ancient tradition of the hooligan tribe that you should, Goober paused dramatically, first catch your dragon. Oh, suffering scallops, thought Hiccups. Our dragons are what set us apart, bellowed Goober. Lesser humans train hawks to hunt for them, horses to carry them. It is only the Viking heroes who dare tame the wildest, most dangerous creatures on earth. Goober spat solemnly into the snow. There are three parts to the dragon initiation test. First, and most important or most dangerous part, is a test of your courage and skill at Burgerly. 
If you wish to enter the Harry Hooligans tribe, you must first catch your dragon. And that is why, continued Goober at full volume, I have brought you to this scenic spot. Take a look at Wild Dragon Cliff itself. The ten, the ten boys tipped their heads backwards. To backwards, The cliff loomed dizzingly high above them, black and sinister. In summer, you could barely even see the cliffs as dragons of all shapes and sizes swarmed over it, snapping and biting and sending up a... Cacophony of noise that could be heard all over Burke. It's going to be that day. But in winter, the dragons were hibernating and the cliff fell silent, except for the ominous low rumble of their snores. Hiccup could feel the vibrations through his sandals. Now, said Goober, do you notice those four caves about halfway up the cliff? Grouped roughly in the shape of a skull? The boys nodded. Inside the cave, that would be the bright eye of the skull, is the dragon nursery, where there are at this very moment 3,000 young dragons having their, their last few weeks of winter sleep. Ooh, muttered the boys excitingly. Hiccup swallowed hard. He happened to know considerably more about dragons than anybody else there. Ever since he was a small boy, he'd been fascinated by the creatures. He spent hours after long hour Dragon watching in secret. Dragging spotters were thought to be geeks and nerds, hence the need for secrecy. And what Hiccup had learned about dragons told him that walking into the cave with 3,000 dragons in it was an act of madness. No one else seemed to con too concerned, however. In a few minutes, I want you to take off... I want you to take one of these baskets and start climbing the cliff, commanded Goober the Belch. Once you're at the cave entrance, you're on your own. I'm too large to squeeze my wary my way into the tunnel that lead to the dragon nursery. You will enter the cave quietly, and that means you too, warty hog, unless you want to become the first spring meal for 3,000 hungry dragons. Ha 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 ha. Goober laughed heartily at his little joke, then continued, Dragons this size are normally fairly harmless to men, but in these numbers they will set upon you like piranhas. They'd be nothing left of you, even a fat, even, ugh, there'd be nothing left of even a fat so like you, warty hog. Just a pile of bones. And your helmet. Ha, 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 ha. So, you will walk quietly through the cave, and each boy will steal one sleeping dragon. Lift the dragon gently from the rock and place in your basket. Any questions so far? Nobody had any questions. So, take a second here to show you. That's the, the, the dragon basket, and it says right here, the dragons go in there. Like, kind of simple. In the unlikely event that you do wake the dragons, and you would have to be idiot idiotically stupid to do so, run like thunder for the entrance to the cave. Dragons do not like cold weather, and the snow will probably stop them in their tracks. Probably, thought Hiccup. Oh, well, that's reassuring. I suggest that you spend a little time choosing your dragon. It is important to get one of the correct size. This will be the dragon that hunts fish for you and pulls down deer for you. You will catch the dragon that will carry you into the battle later. Carry you into battle later on, and when you are much older and the warrior of the tribe, but nonetheless you want to impress animals, so a rough guide would be cho So a rough guide would be choose the biggest creature that will fit in your basket. Don't linger for too long in there. Linger, thought Hiccups, in a cave full of three thousand sleeping dragons. I need not tell you, Goober continued cheerfully, that if you return to this spot without a dragon, it is hardly worth coming back at all. Anybody who fills this test fills this task will be put into immediate exile. The Harry, Harry Hooligan tribe has no use for failures. Only the strong can belong. Unhappily, Hiccup looked around the distant horizon. Nothing but snow and sea for as far as the eye could see. Exile didn't look too promising either. Right, said Goober briskly. Each boy take a basket and put their dragon in it and we'll get going. The boys rushed to get their baskets, chattering happily and excitedly. I'm going to get one of those monstrous nightmare ones with the extra extendable claws. They're really scary, boasted Snotlot. Oh, shut up, Snotlot, you can't, said Speedy Fist. Only Hiccup can have a monstrous nightmare one. You have to be the son of a chief. Hiccup's father was the stoic, the vast, the fearsome chief of the hairy hooligan tribe. Hiccup? sneered Snotlot. If he's as useless as this as he is at Bashy Ball, we'll be lucky if he even gets one of the basic browns. The basic brown 
was the most common type of dragon, a serviceable beast, but without much glamour. Shut up and get into line, you miserable tadpoles, yelled Goober the Belch. And the boys scrambled into their place, baskets on their back, and stood at attention. Goober walked along the line, lighting the torch that each boy held in front of him from the great flame, the great flare in his hand. In half an hour time, you will be a Viking warrior with your faithful serp serpent at your side. All right, Viking, Viking dra dragons and their eggs. The common or garden and the basic brown. The common and garden and the basic brown are so similar that you can be dealt with together. These are the most familiar breeds, the one with instantly thick think of when you say dragon. They are poor hunters, but they are easy to train. These dragons are the best for family pets, although, as with a lion or tiger, they should never be left unsupervised with a very young child. Their statistics. Color, green and yellow, all shades of brown. Armed with basic teeth and claws. Defenses, prickly spines, two. Radar, none, zero. Poison, none, zero. Haunting ability, lethargic hunters, three. Speed, swift and retreat, eight. Fear and flight factor, good when angry, four. So, faithful serve at your side or breakfasting with the wooden and Valhalla with dragon's teeth in your bottom, screamed Goober with horrible enthusiasm. Death or glory, yelled Goober. Death or glory, yelled eight boys back at him, dressed fanatically. Death, thought Hiccup and Fishleg sadly. Goober paused dramatically with the horn to his lip. I think this could possibly be the worst moment of my life so far, thought Hiccup to himself as he waited for the blast of the horn. And if they shout much louder, we're going to wake up those dragons before we even start. Perp, blew, Goober blew the horn. All right, so there the boys are yelling and getting ready to go catch the dragons. All right, that's the end of that chapter. Um... So all we did was like learn about our main character, which his name is Hiccup. And actually, it's, it's a lot longer than that, actually, if I remember right. His name is actually Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III, the hope and heir to the tribe of the Hairy Hooligans. That's his name. So we'll just call him Hiccup for a short, because it'll be easier. And he has to do what to prove that he is a good Viking, so he can be a hunter, stay in his village. Yeah, he has to catch a baby dragon and go train it. Sounds so easy, right? What's special about his family? His family is the chief of the village. His dad is the chief. He's the main one, and that's something that passes down from family to family. So. He would end up being chief if something happened to his dad. All right, chapter two, Inside the Dragon Nursery. You have probably guessed by now that Hiccup was not your natural Viking hero. For a start, he didn't look like a hero. Somebody like Snoutlot, for instance, was tall, muscly, covered in skeleton tattoos and already had the beginning of a small mustache. This consisted of a few straggly yellow hairs clinging to his upper lip and was deeply unpleasant to look at, but still impressively manly for a boy not yet 13. Hiccup was on the small side and had, to, had the kind of face that was almost entirely unmemorable. He did have heroic hair, which was, which was a very bright red, and stood up vertically, however, much, however much you tried to wet it down with seawater. But nobody ever saw that because it was hidden under his helmet most of the time. He would never have picked Hiccup out of those ten boys to be the hero of this story. Or you would never. Snotlot was a good at everything and a, and a natural leader. Dog's Breath was a tall as his father and could do amu amu amusing things like farting to the tune of the Burke National Anthem. Hiccup was just absolutely average. The kind of unremarkable skinny freckled boy who was easy to overlook in a crowd. So when Goober blew the horn and moved out of sight to find a comfortable rock to sit on and eat his muscle and tomato sandwich, Snotlot picked pushed Hiccup out of the way and took charge. Okay, listen up, boys, he whispered in a menacing fashion. I'm in charge, not the useless. And anybody who objects gets a knuckle sandwich from Dog Breath the Dub Brain. Uh, grunted Dog's Breath, pounding his fist together in happy excitement. Dog Breath was not lots chief sidekick and a great big gorilla of a boy. Bash him, Dog Breath, to show what I mean. 
Dog Breath was delighted to oblige. He gave Hiccup a shove and then sent him sprawling headfirst into the snow and then ground his face into it. Pay attention, hissed Snotlot. The boy dragged their eyes away from Dog's Breath and Hiccup and paid attention. Rope yourselves together. The best climber should go first. Well, that's you, of course, Snotlot, said Fishlegs. You're the best at everything, aren't you? Snotlot looked at Fishlegs suspiciously. It was difficult to tell whether Fishlegs was laughing at him or not because of his squint. That's right, Fishlegs, said Snotlot. I am. And just in case he had been laughing at him, bash him, Dog's Breath. While Dog Breath pushed Fishleg down to join Hiccup the snow, in the snow, everybody started roping themselves together. Hiccup and Fishlegs were the last to be tied on, just behind in a flushed, triumphant Dog Breath. Oh, brilliant, muttered Fishlegs. I'm about to enter a cave full of man-eating reptiles tied up to eight complete maniacs. If we get to the cave, said Hiccup nervously, looking up at the sheer black cliff. Hiccup put the light, lighted torch between his teeth to leave his hand free and started climbing up climbing after the others. It was a perilous climb. The rocks were slippery with snow, and the other boys were thoroughly overexcited, making the ascent far and too quickly. At one point, Clueless missed his footing and fell, luckily into Dog Breath, who caught him by the back of the trousers and heaved him back on the rock again before he brought the whole lot of them down. When they finally made it to the mouth of the cave, Hiccup looked down briefly at the sea, pounding the rocks away below, and swallowed very hard. Untie the ropes, ordered Snotlot, his eyes popping of excitement at the thought of the dangers to come. Hiccup goes into the cave first because he is the son of the chief, he sneered. And if any of the dragons are awake, he'll be the first to know about it. Once we're in the cave, it's every man for himself. Only the strong can belong. Although he wasn't your usual mindless thug of hooligan, Hiccup wasn't a wimp either. Being frightened is not the same as being a coward. Maybe he was as brave as anyone else there because he went, went in to catch a dragon despite knowing what dragons are like. And when he climbed perilously, into, in the, perilously to the mouth of the cave and had found that inside there was a long, twisty tunnel, he still went down it, despite not being too keen on a long, twisty tunnel with dragons at the end of them. The tunnel was dripping and clammy. At times, it was high enough for the boys to walk upright. Then it would close down into narrow, claustrophobic holes that the boys could only just squeeze through, squirming on their stomachs with the flares held in their mouths. After a ten-minute-long meeting, oh, sorry, after ten long minutes of walking and crawling into the heart of the cliff, the stench of dragon, a salty stink of seaweed and old mackerel heads, got together, or got stronger and stronger until finally it became unbearable and the tunnel opened out into an enormous cave. The cavern was full of more dragons than Hiccup could ever have imagined existed. They were every possible color and size. They included all the species that Hiccup had heard of and quite a few more that he hadn't. Hiccup started sweating as he looked around him. That pile after pile of the animals draped over every available surface and even hanging upside down from the roof like giant bats. They were all fast asleep, and most of them were snoring in unison. This was a sound so loud and so deep that it seemed to penetrate right into Hiccup's body and vibrate around his soft insides, churning his stomach and bowels and forcing his heart to beat at the same slow dragon pulse. If one, just one of these countless creatures were to wake up, it would raise the alarm to the others and the boys would never, and the boys would meet a horrible death. Hiccup had once seen a deer that had wandered too close to a wild dragon cliff, torn to pieces in a matter of minutes. Hiccup closed his eyes. I will not think about it, he said to himself. I will not. None of the other boys were thinking about it. Ignorance is very useful in such circumstances. Their eyes were popping with excitement as they walked through the cave, hands over their noses to keep out the revolting smell looking for the biggest dragons that they could find that would fit in their baskets. They left the torches in a pile at the entrance. The cavern was already well lit by glowworms, huge sluggish animals dotted here and there that shone with a steady yet dim fluorescence, like a low watt light bulb. And the flame huffers gave extra, gave off extra little bursts of flight of light that flickered on and off as they breathed in and out. Predictably, most of the boys headed towards the plug, plug uglies of the dragon world. Snotlout made a big fuss about grabbing a vicious-looking monstrous nightmare, smiling nastily at Hiccup as he did so. 
Snotlot was the son of a baggy bum, the beer belly, Stoic's vast's younger brother, and he was intended to get rid of Hiccup sometime in the future so that he, Snotlot, would become the chief of the Harry Hooligan tribe. And a gruesome and terrifying chief, as Snotlot meant to be, he would, would need a properly awesome dragon. Warthog and Dog's Breath got into a loudly whispered fight about over a Gronkle, a heavy armored brute with fangs like kitchen knives sticking out in such numbers that it could keep its mouth shut. Dog's Breath won, and then managed to drop it as he was trying to bundle it into a basket. The weaponry of the beast made a horribly loud clatter, and it landed on the floor of the cavern. The Gronkle opened its evil crocodile eyes, and everybody held their breath. The Gronkle stared ahead. It was difficult to tell from his blank expression whether it was awake or fast asleep. Hiccup realized in an agony of suspense that the gossamer thin third eyelid was still down, and there it stayed for a few heart-stopping moments until it slowly closed its upper eyelids again. Amazingly, not one of the other dragons woke up. A few grumbled groggily before making themselves comfy again, but most were in such a stupor that they barely even stirred. Hiccup let out a breath. Maybe these dragons were so dragons were so dead to the world that nothing would wake them from their slumber. He swallowed hard and muttered a prayer to Loki, the patron saint of the sneaky exploits, and edged forward cautiously to grab the most unconscious looking dragon so he could get out of this nightmare as fast as possible. Alright, so we heard about the Gronkle. The Gronkle is a is the plug ugly of the dragon world, but what it lacks in looks, it makes up for on the battlefield. They can be slow and, dare I say it, stupid, but sometimes they go, they get so fat that they aren't able to take off. They're also pr prone to drag me, dragon acne. So that's like zits. Their colors, snot green, boogie beige, and pooey brown. Armed with all the best of dragon weaponry, things like daggers, extra spikes on the neck, ball with spikes at the end of the tail. So that's an eight. Defenses, super thick, flame-proof, and scratch-proof skin. That's a nine. Radar, none, zero. Poison, none, zero. Hunting abilities, crockles are slow to maneuver in the air, so zero. Speed, see above, five. Fear and fight factor, terrifying in action, nine. It's a little-known fact that dragons grow colder the deeper they sleep. It is even possible for dragons to go into a sleep coma in which they are icy cold with no obvious pulse or breath or heartbeat. They can stay in that state for centuries and only halfly skilled and only highly skilled experts can tell them from looking at them if they are alive or dead. But a dragon who is awake is or lightly sleeping is very warm indeed, like bread that has just come out of the oven. Hiccup found one that was about the right size and fairly cool to the touch and maneuvered it to his bas basket as quickly as as quickly and carefully as he could. It was a very basic brown, but at the moment, Hiccup could not have cared less. Even though it was barely half grown, it was surprisingly heavy. I did it, I did it, I did it, he chanted happily to himself. At least he wasn't going to be the only boy in class who didn't have a dragon. Everybody seemed to have gotten themselves one by now, and they were all making their way quietly towards the exit. Everybody, that was, except for Fish Legs, who was already covered in bright red itchy rash and was at that very moment approaching a pile of knottily entangled matters on very loud tiptoes. Fish legs was even worse at burger burgery and dog's breath. Hiccup stopped dead in his track. Don't do it, fish legs, please don't do it, he whispered. But fish legs was fed up with snot louch touting and of being sneered at and jeered at. He was going to get himself a really cool dragon that all the bro other boys would respect. Squinting so hard he could barely see the pile of dragons, his eyes steaming streaming and scratching themselves finally fish legs reached down slowly to the bottom most dragon took one leg in his hand and gently yanked yanked the entire pile came crashing down in a furious tangle of limbs and wings and ears every boy in the cavern gave a horrified gasp most of the natter snapped cross at each other before settling back down to sleep one brute began bigger than the others opened his eyes and blinked a few times Hiccup noted with great relief that the third eyelid was still down. The boys waited for the eyes to close, and then Fish Leg sneezed four gigantic sneezes that went echoing and bouncing off the cavern walls. The big natter stared sightless, sightlessly ahead, frozen like a dragon statue. But very faintly, an ominous purring noise began in his throat, and very slowly the third eyelid slid upwards. Uh-oh, whispered Hiccup. 
The natter's head suddenly whipped around to face fish legs, and his yellow cat eyes snapping into focus on the boy. He was unfolded, its wings to their greatest extent, and steath stealthily advanced like a panther about to spring. It opened its mouth, widened up to show the forked dragon tongue, and... Run! shouted Hiccup, grabbing Fishlegs' arm and dragging him away. The boys ran from the exit tunnel. Fishlegs and Hiccup were the last to get there. There was no time to pick up the torches, so they were running in the pitch dark. The basket with the basic brown dragon in it was bump humping, sorry, bumping on Hiccup's back. They had two minutes to start on the dragons because it took a while for the first dragon to wake up everybody else. But Hiccup could hear a furious roaring and flapping as the dragon started to pour into the tunnel after the boys. He ran a little faster. The dragons could move faster than the boys because they could see better in the dark. But they were held up when the tunnel got smaller and they had to fold their rings to squirm through. I haven't got a dragon, panted Fishlegs, a couple of paces behind Hiccup. That, said Hiccup, as he scrambled frantically on his elbow through a narrow bit, is the least out of our problems. They're gaining on us. No, dragon, repeated Fishlegs stubbornly. Oh, for Thor's sake, snapped Hiccup. He thrust his back into Fishlegs' arms and grabbed the empty one from Fishlegs' back. Have mine, then. Wait here. And Hiccup turned and went back through the narrow bit, even though the roaring was getting louder and closer by the second. What are you doing, screamed Fishlegs, frantically dancing up and down on the spot. Hiccup came back through the hole again. Precious moments, moments later, Fishlegs grabbed a hold of an arm to haul him through. They could hear horrible snuffing, and that sounded as if the dragon, the nose of the dragon had entered the other end of the hole. Hiccup bungeed a rock at it, and it squealed indignantly. They turned a corner, and suddenly they could see light from outside the tunnel of the final tunnel, outside the end of the final tunnel. Fishlight went first, but just as Hiccup was kneeling down to follow it, a dragon pounced on him with a flap and a shriek. Hiccup hit it, and it fell back enough for him to crawl towards the light. Another dragon, or maybe the same one, sank its fang into Hiccup's calf. He was so desperate to get out of his, to get out, he dragged the animal through with him. As soon as Hiccup's head and shoulders were through the light, there was Goober. He grabbed Hiccup on his armpit and hauled him out. Dragons jumped pouring out after him. Jump! Yelled Goober, and as he stunned a dragon with one blow of his mighty fist, "What do you mean, jump?" Hiccup hesitated as he looked down at the dizzying drop into the sea. No time, to climb, no time to climb down, panted Goober. Banging a couple dragons' heads together and pouncing three or more off his gigantic belly. Jump! Hiccup closed his eyes and leaped off the cliff as he plunged through the air that the dragon that was attached to his leg released his jaw with a squawk of alarm and flew off. Hiccup was traveling at such a speed by the time he hit the water that it didn't feel like water at all, more like something hard and painful and so cold that he nearly passed out. He spluttered, to the sur he spluttered to the surface, amazed to find that he didn't appear to be dead, and was immediately drenched by the gigantic splash of Goober the Belch landing a couple of feet away from him. Shrieking furiously, the dragon swarmed out of the cave and dive-bombed the floating Vikings. Hiccup pulled, pulled his helmet far, as far down as he would as it would go. There were terrible scraping sounds of dragon talons raking across the metal. Another one landed hissing on the right and the water right in front of Hiccup's face. It took off again, and with a screech when it felt how cold it was, the sea was. The dragon didn't like flying through the snow, and with relief, Hiccup watched as they flew back as they flew back to scream terrible dragon insults and dragonese from the warmth of their cave entrance. Goober started to pull the boys out of the sea and onto the rocks, and the Viking boys were strong swimmers, but it is difficult to keep afloat when you have a basket full of trapped, terrified dragons on your back. Hiccup was the last to be saved, just in time as the cold was beginning to put him to sleep. Well, at least that wasn't death, thought Hiccup, as Goober grabbed him by the neck and rescued him, nearly drowning him again in the process. But it certainly wasn't glory, either. Okay, so, that was our chapter two. The boys had to go find their dragons. Uh, didn't go very well. I mean, it went fine at first, but then fish, le fish legs. I didn't think it was fish legs. Uh, woke some dragons up, and then it all went to... Uh, so, we will find out... Cause, well, what happened with Hiccup and his dragon? Did he get a dragon? 
he did, and he got the basic one, one of the easy ones to grab because he's like, I just don't want to be exiled. But as he was running out with fish leg, he found out that fish leg didn't have one and he was worried he was going to be exiled. So finally, he just got annoyed with him and gave him his, and he ran back in. So we don't know what he ran back in for. But that's where we're going to stop for this video. Uh, we will continue, and maybe we'll find out what he went for. I will see you guys next time.